Your discretion is advised. DW. No disrespect. Oh my God. Don't do that. You kind of have bad energy. Like, wait, you wait. want us to be on top of making sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on, my brothers and sisters? And yes, I had heard it right. Adam Candy has told DW Flame that he has bad B energy. And this was the icing on the cake because you see DW Flame had got up and he had left. He already knew it was coming. He didn't even like it. But we're going to get into it because he has slept on it and he came back to no jumper and he said this. Where Adam at? Adam here? No. Yeah, tell Cutter come in here too. One minute, I was like, and this is when the uneasiness kicks in right here. Notice how everybody except for that one dude in the green hoodie is like, oh boy, we're about to go down. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get this shit straight right here cause all that weird shit, all that gay shit, bitch shit that niggas be playing, I don't play that cause if you gotta do that type of shit to be at No Jumper, nigga, fuck No Jumper, 23rd Street, nigga. See, now you expect for this to happen right after that, but you know, that's not the case because that's DW Flame, and you already know how they act towards him. But we know for a fact that Sharp, Sharp, you should have been on go because how you pressed that white boy who had that no jumper tatted on his head? Hold on. What? Nah, what? What you standing up for, bro? nah, he ain't trying to fight. What you standing up for, bro? Like, he not like trying to fight. Like, and it all started because of that tattoo or no jumper logo he had on his head. So you rep and you ride for no jumper. We already know that. I don't play that. Nowhere, I have never, never let a nigga play like that. I only left yesterday because I was off that henny. I know how I get. What I just said. On 23rd Street. What I just said. I'll be on bunk skunk in this motherfucker on insane crib. You don't play with niggas like me. You play with niggas like Okay, so here's the part where DW Flame starts beating on his chest and flexing all his muscles. You know, talking his talk and all that. I'm a positive figure. You feel me? So, for the most part, and I'm a gang stop. Y'all kills me with this right here. This guy didn't even finish one sentence and been a hypocrite with it. Hear me out. You a positive figure. And then you say you a gangster. What are you a gangster of? Killing people who look like you. Okay? This is the new black Ku Klux Klan I keep telling y'all about. Here's the proof. What did Brick Baby say when he spazzed out on live? Bitch, the only reason I ain't come outside and kill one of you niggas cause cause I was in front of these white niggas. That being said, every time they get into it with somebody from a gang, it's always somebody who looks like me or looks like them. Black, the new Ku Klux Klan killers. And what's even more insane about that is that they behave around white people. They ain't gonna get too turned up. That's why DW Flame got up and walked after Adam called him a bad B. Let's be real. If that was somebody who looked like me and called him that, he would have jumped across the table. Or he might would have put the firepower on you. I'm from 23rd Street, nigga, the worst street. I went to St. Crib and we ain't never, I ain't, nigga, I ain't never seen. He didn't, he didn't, let's get this right too. He did not call me a bitch. At that all. is, that's not what he At said. All. And if he would have called you a B, what would you do, DW Flame? Let's be real. He borderline called you that, and once again, if it was somebody who looked like me who would have played around like that, you would have been on go. That's equivalent to me even calling you a B directly. I said no weed. Gangsters I like, be the I most sensitive like a, niggas. Hey, nigga, I'm rolling your weed. I'm I mean, like, because we've been through a lot. Y'all so we got, sensitive. We got layers to pull back. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. But be, that, that make us deep. That make us deeper than the than the dude who graduated from Harvard, who but daddy that just paid his way. that somebody easily can take control of you. Uh, no, no, no. Nah, but. There was a lot said in this clip right here. She said gangsters be the most sensitive, even though that's subjective from her perspective. But she's referring to DW Flame and the half corporate, half street dudes who be on no jumper. And you see how he responded and said that that what makes us deeper than the guy who goes to Harvard and his dad pays him all the way. You see how you be hating on the square business? Let's call it ace what it is, man. You is emotionally unstable, DW Flame. A woman, even like her, could carry herself better than you on emotion wise. Let's be real. And she is also right about that's how they can control you. Like a attack dog, like a German Shepherd, a dog whistle. They could say certain words, push your buttons to make you act out and act animalistic. You see right there, that's the programming, man. And we getting older. Let's be real, we're adults right here. I'm pretty sure you have kids like Brick Baby, so it looks even more foolish on y'all behalf to act out or try to play street. 
because I have responsibilities. This is not Judy from Baby Boy. I keep referencing that movie because you're running from your responsibilities. You decided to make a family. You have to take care of a family and you over here playing. You can't be half street and you can't be half corporate. If you want to go all that gang banging route, take it all the way right there because this is a new era we in. To the point where all this stuff that you're doing or acting is going to be on camera, on the internet. It's going to be people who's in their basement who's going to keep on instigating or talking crazy. They're not going to go to your hood. I know that for a fact. They're not going to go to your hood, but it's going to make, it's going to be mind control for you to crash out. 